It's time for the Northwoods Cooking Show. Starring Uncle Roy and Miss Kelly, the troublemaking dog. Now we're going to make some apricot Christmas bars. These are going to be really easy and fun to make. We got the oven preheating at 350 degrees. And we need one and a quarter cups of butter. Pre-softened. And when it's, if it's hard and you take it out of the fridge here, put it in the microwave for about 20 seconds. Don't melt it, just soften it. And then we need uh, two cups of flour. And I want to make, uh, just soften this up a little bit better. Break it down, just for a few seconds, for about 30 seconds. And then we put in two cups of flour. This is a very simple recipe and you can make it any type of flavored jam that you want to. I happen to have apricot preserves. And it works with anything. You can use a apple pie filling or a cherry pie filling. You can use any type of jams or jellies you want. And then we also need two cups, uh, let's see, two cups of flour, two cups of oatmeal. And these are the quick oats. We need one and a half cups of sugar. And that's all there is to it, that's simple. Now put this on low. You don't want it flying up all over the place. And we'll mix this up until it's crumbly. And I need to put in one more stick of butter. I only did three fourths cup. I did one stick and one quarter. I need to have two sticks in one quarter because you need one and a quarter cups of butter all together. So I was missing half a cup. So I'll just put that in there. And we'll mix this up. Until crumbly, and that should be shortly. And then that's all nice and crumbly. Now we want to take and reserve one and a half cups of this crumb mixture for the topping. So there is one and a half. And we leave the um, pan ungreased because we got a lot of the butter in here. So that's gonna help it from stick, keep it from sticking. And then we just pour the rest of this batter, crumbly, crumblies, the crust into the pan. And then just press this down. This is a very easy recipe to do. I made this quite often and you, like I said, you can use any flavor jam or jelly that you want to, or preserves or apple pie filling or cherry pie filling, whatever, any type of pie filling. Even mincemeat if you want to too, for people that like a little bit more savory. That's really good too. I've tried everything. It's wonderful. But these are going to be the apricot bars. And for this, oh, can't get that off, Kelly. I'll eat. Especially with my arthritis. <laughs> We need uh, two and a half cups. Or it turns out to be one large can of pie filling. Then this we just take and spread across our crust.
A date filling would be really good too. You can get those, uh, the recipe for the date filling on your pinwheel date bars. The pinwheel cookies has that, that date filling. You can use this, make, make up that filling and just pour that over this crust. That would be a good one too. The, you know, the fillings are endless. You can make any combination that you want to. But this is just your basic crust and topping. So we got this now all smoothed out. That was two and a half cups of filling of the preserves. And then we put the rest of the topping on top of that. The remaining half, one and a half cups of the crumbs. And just sprinkle that over the top. And then we'll put this in our oven. Remember it's at 350 degrees. Oops, look. Squirrels and kitties and everything going by the window this morning. Who's all excited? And so this will go in at 350 for about 20 to 25 minutes to light golden brown on top. And then we'll take these out and we're ready for our apricot bars. Mmm. <laughs> Now we're going to make some more Christmas cookies and these are going to be called, these are called um, Amish sugar cookies. And for this we need half a cup of softened butter. Now remember I just stick it in there, the butter in the microwave for only 20 seconds. We don't want to melt this, we just want to soften it up. Because I just pulled this out of the refrigerator and it was hard, it wasn't at room temperature. But that's how you can do it. And just mix that up for about 30 seconds. To this we need a uh, half cup of sugar and you want to let this add this now so that the sugar and butter can get fluffy. Just add it slowly. We want to dissolve up the sugar crystals. And then to that we also need a half cup of oil. And a half cup of powdered sugar. So many backups, unreal. I think which ones I don't know which ones are open. <laughs> well, that's what I do when you know I bake a lot, so when things are on sale I buy them and stock up. So we need a half cup powdered sugar. I'm going to put this back down on low. You don't want this powdered sugar flying all over the place. And a half teaspoon of vanilla. Along with one egg. And of course, remember to scrape the side of your bowl. You got all that butter and sugar laying up on the sides here and on the bottom. You want to scrape it so they all get incorporated very well. It's so important when making your cookies is to have all the ingredients thoroughly incorporated. And then we need a half teaspoon each 
uh, baking soda and cream of tartar. Now I like to put my baking soda and cream of tartar in now so that it gets incorporated into the liquids before I add the flour. You can take and use a separate bowl, mix the flour, soda, and tartar together, and then add that to the bowl. But this leaves us less cleanup. But the thing for sure is that you want to add your flour in last and stir it in. Because if you uh, uh, use the mixer to put the flour in, it's going to activate the gluten, and that's going to make your cookies hard. And we don't want hard cookies, especially at Christmas time. Unless, unless that's what the recipe, unless that's what the kind of cookie it is. <laughs> like biscotti is hard no matter what. <laughs> so we want two and a quarter cups of flour. This is a very light, crisp, uh, fluffy uh, sugar cookie. I made this quite a few times, and you can take and um, when we make this, when we ball up the sugar, the ball up the cookie dough into balls, you can dip the balls into different color sugars or uh, sprinkles or whatever, so you can make it more festive for the holiday. And that's all there is to it. Then we just take and scoop out our cookies. It's a really wonderful, airy, light sugar cookie. And I always use the cookie scooper so that my cookies are more uniform. They're all basically the same size. And everybody asks me when I do cookies, how come they're so perfect? Well, the cookie isn't perfect, but what it is, it's the cookie scoop gives you the, the same portion so that every cookie is portioned correctly with the same amount of dough in it. And so they look like they're all the same and it makes them look like they're perfect. <laughs> you know? But it's Christmas, you want things to look nice. Because you're going to be giving these away for presents to friends and family or neighbors or the school teacher or whatever. Even the mail, mailman or here, the mail lady. Oh, <laughs> she heard that. Say that word and she goes crazy. <laughs> because the mail lady here gives, gives her treats when they happen to meet each other. She gets all excited if you say that. <laughs> so we'll just take and finish these off here, scoop it off. Now your oven's at 375, so you had to turn it up a notch. And then I always take and alternate my rows so I can squeeze more cookies in on the sheet. And then we'll just get some sprinkles. Just take a little cup and pour some of your sprinkles into it. And then just press in your cookie dough. And then these get baked at the 375 for like eight to 10 minutes. And then these are <coughs> our Amish sugar cookies. Mmm, these turned out nice. Also, when you pull your cookies out of the oven, leave them on the cookie sheet for about a minute to cool before removing them and putting them on your cooling rack. And the reason is because you want it to set, which means you want the cookie to firm up for transporting it. Oh, here she comes. Oh, you always show up and the food's done. You're not here to help, it's here to eat. Yeah, look at you. Guilty eyes. So you want, you want to leave them on the cookie sheet so that they set. Then you can remove them off safely and you want them to uh, cool completely on the wire rack. And then these are um, Amish sugar cookies. And then here's my apricot bars. Lovely tray of bars. Now if you want to, you can take, melt some chocolate and drizzle that 
zigzag it over it, or white chocolate. That adds a beautiful touch to it. These are still kind of warm yet, and I got them in the window there to cool down, but these have to set completely before cutting, otherwise they're gonna crumble and fall apart on you too. So you wanna cool these completely. So these are wonderful treats, aren't they, Cali Alley? Oh, look at that. You sew up when, it, when everything's done. You're not here to help, you're here to eat. Look at you, you're such a piggly wiggly. A piggly wiggly, here yeah, you are. You ain't nothing but a house go. Let's see who wrote us this week, Callie. I think it's a treat and answer the mail. And you too, if you have any questions for Callie or I on baking or canning or cooking or gardening, etc., feel free to write us at the Northwoods Cooking Show at yahoo.com and we'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can, or we maybe even air your question on the air. And Callie gets a tweet. And uh, we also want to remind you that we're on Facebook and YouTube. Just type in the Northwoods Cooking Show in the search column, click on search, and our show will pop right up. In Facebook, you can go on to my profile, Roy Barum, that's B-E-R-R-U-M, or just type in the Northwoods Cooking Show and the videos will pop right up. If you go to my profile, I also have a page, the Northwoods Cooking Show, on Facebook, and just click on vid uh, photos. The middle section will pop up with photos, and then the upper right hand corner it says videos. Click that, and then all the videos will pop up. So let's see who wrote us this week, Callie. Oh, you gotta get your tweet first, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Our homemade doggy treats are better than the cookies. Yeah. Come on, move it. Santa's helper. Santa's helper. Santa's helper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here. I'll give me half one. Yeah. Or, or the top. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Come here. Oh, fancy in the mail. Dear Uncle Roy, Miss Callie, I was wondering what the difference is between light brown sugar and dark brown sugar. Signed, Carolyn of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thanks, Carolyn. Yeah, it's, um, there is a difference between the two, of course. The main difference is, of course, the light and darkness. But what it is, is in flavor, too, the dark has uh, what brown sugar is. It's molasses mixed in with white sugar. And so light has less molasses in it, and the dark brown sugar has much more molasses in it. So it depends on the flavor you want and the color you're using. Uh, dark brown sugar is usually used for like a gingerbread cake, or molasses cookies for your darker cookies or darker cake treats and the lighter is for more of your light um, treats like say uh, chocolate chip cookies so you don't get you don't get a dark look to it you want to keep a lighter look to it that's why you want to use a lighter or a darker brown sugar depending upon what type of cookie or cake you're making um, it adds a coloring to it and it gives it more sweetness too between the light and dark I hope that answer. You can <clears throat> you can interchange them, interchangeably mix them together if you want to. But the main difference is that one is heavier, sweeter than the other because it has more molasses in it and it's darker. We hope that answers your questions, Carolyn. And from Miss Callie, Santa's helper, Max, Winter's helper. Callie, Alec, come here. Come here. Callie, where'd she go? Kelly, Kitty. Come here. Here we go. Sit pretty. Come on. Sit pretty. There you go. So from Kelly, myself, uh, we like to say um, healthy eating, be safe, spread the sunshine, and Merry Christmas, everybody.